go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to go that far. These people are wearing uniforms, you can't say those things to them. <laughs> the point we are making here, my friends, is simply this. We are in trouble. Simply because we assume that our proximity to certain individuals and our spiritual heritage is the equivalent of power. We need to have an encounter with Christ. Paul met Jesus face to face. He was not silly and he was told what was going to happen. He became a powerful instrument because of the encounter with Christ. As simple as that. Paul needed to get baptized. He needed to start over. He needed to receive not only his physical sight, but also spiritual sight. He needed to be taught by the church that he tried to destroy. We need an encounter with Christ. And then we need to be subjected to the authority of the church of God. We need to understand that our spiritual heritage. Oh, I'm a third, fourth generation Adventist. Nonsense! You need power! You need an encounter with Jesus Christ. And you need for your life to be transformed so that you can become a channel for the pulsating power of the Holy Spirit. This gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached to all the world as a testament to the nations. That will only happen not by education, not by training, not by resources. It will happen by the power of the Holy Spirit. The devil needs to recognize that he's facing power. The places where we are, they need to be changed because of our, of our presence and the power that accompanies our presence. It's not just we are discussing in this church for No. No. We need power. That's all I can do, church. We need power. We have everything else. We used to have a conference president who used to say to us, look, my faith is not a problem. We don't even have money problems. We can pay for campaigns, we can pay for evangelization. It is just that our local church uh, budgets don't reflect that we are a church. Our budgets are saying that we are something else, if you look at the budgeting framework that we are using. And that's also evidence that we don't have power. Because if our thinking was regulated by the power of the Holy Spirit, our budgeting would be different. Amen. Yes. All I want to say is, we are beyond recognition. And it's time for us to be recognized. Yes. And for that reason, we need an encounter with Christ. Mm -hmm. The timekeeper has shown me that my time is up. And because I'm very obedient, my time is up. Amen. Let us stand to our feet because we are going to pray. Pastor, can I ask them to stand to pray? Yeah. I'm not going to even make a feel. They know what they're feeling. <laughs> they know their feel is going to But now, there are many pastors here. Which one do I have to pray? <laughs> Is it me? Oh, they are saying it's me. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we pause in your presence. And we ask for power. We ask for a real encounter with Christ. We want to confess that our spiritual heritage means nothing. Our connection with church offices means nothing. The positions that we occupy in your church counts for nothing. We are asking for a transforming and a life-changing encounter with Jesus. And that the primitive godliness that characterized the, the first century church, that that godliness may be rekindled in this church. That the places where we find ourselves, or the places of influence where we operate, that those places may be transformed because of our presence. And even in our absence, may the power of God be manifested in those places. Lord, take us on a journey that will be fulfilling. Take us on a journey where we can see these demonstrations of your power. 
We have come to this place to have a mountaintop experience. May we live here having experienced the presence and power of God. And may the power of God remain with us even to the point where demonic forces recognize who we are and who we are connected to. Bless us to that end for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.